Okay, good morning. I have a request from a viewer of mine uh, on some questions that he has. Um, apparently he's from, or he's studying, or he's trying to study, I don't know, uh, basically something regarding car industry. And specifically, uh, he has questions that he would like to ask with regards to design and things like that. Now, I am not a graduate in automotive design. I'm not a graduate in mechanical engineering. I'm basically I'm a shit student. All right, but since he asked me, I'm gonna attempt to answer some of his questions. Some might be um, a bit overlapping. I, I would say um, he asked things like so. There we go. Let, let's start. Based on your opinion, how do you define the brand identity of a company? Um, I think brand identity is something that is important, not just for cars per se. It can be for any products in any industry. It is what you've been consistently doing and when consumers talk about your brand or they heard about your brand, they conjure up an image, a rough image of what you roughly represent. And that is a good way of giving a shortcut to understand or believe or trust in your new products. In the old days, brand identity isn't something that is purposely manufactured. Okay, in the old days, uh, one mechanical engineer might practice his way from an apprentice to making his own car another guy might have another route right but now we can see it's different now everybody graduates from some place they work in car companies they swap around they have job roles they are all roughly similar and in terms of market segments in terms of government regulations they produce roughly the same thing you see every car has side mirrors it's mandated Right? Every car has uh, headlamps, fog lamps and all that is mandated. Right? Cars cannot put a headlamp in the middle of the car is mandated. All these are rules and regulations that everybody must uh, adhere to. And then you have fuel efficiency levels, you have emission controls. That means every single so-called 100 year old German manufacturer, everybody has a four cylinder engine, four door car, you know, with two headlamps on the on the corners, two tail lights at the back. All these are confined, right? But in the olden days, you might have your own thinking, he might have his own thinking, and slowly your supporters, your customers uh, like what you do, and that sort of became your brand identity. <laughs> So, um, in terms of a brand identity of, of any company, I think that is important. Like you think of BMW, right? You think of uh, sporty driving behavior. You think of uh, motorsports, even though they don't participate in that many motorsports now, right? Um, but that's the brand image that they gave you, you know? Every car should drive well and things like that. And that sort of even affects how people perceive their cars when they buy a BMW, you know. The person might not be driving enthusiastically, but then uh, the placebo effect would be they buy a BMW and then immediately you ask them, how does, how does it drive? Oh, it drives fantastic, you know, so different, but actually it might not be, right? So that's that's how a brand identity can affect someone's perception towards a product. Same goes with Volvo, right? They have been really persistent in safety, even though they are still at the, I mean, they're still leading, they're still leading by far, but uh, that's, it's not something fake, right? That's their ideology, that's how they believe their, their company should be. And then you, you think of Mazda, you think of something. There are certain brands that sort of lost their brand identity along the way. Um, Infinity, for example, you can't think of, you can't really grab what they represent. Renault, you can't really grab what they represent. Are they a, uh, a mass market manufacturer that, that manufactures uh, honest day to day cars, or are they an F1 uh, participating brand that is very good in racing and all that? What are they, you know? 
that is what car makers should sometimes look at in, in crafting their own identity again and again re-emphasize it again and again to craft their own unique selling point yeah that is what I think uh, constitutes a, a, a brand's brand identity the second question he asks is uh, how do you define emotional design now to me emotional design is rather Do I want to call it fake or what? But I think it is something that has been uh, overly cliche. You know, everybody presents a car, show a few lines, and then they use the term sparsely. They use it liberally. Oh, this is so emotional. I think emotional design back then it refers to something that um, the designer put in a lot of passion, a lot of heart work in it that you as a buyer as a customer or just someone who sees it you can see past uh, what it or what on the surface it represents and you can immediately tell that person put in a lot of effort in coming up with this you know I think that to me at least that to me is what I would term as uh, emotional design it is not something that can be forced but it's only something that you know it is a line away from overtly design you know <laughs> I'll give you an example uh, the Peugeot RCZ the Peugeot RCZ the two bubble roofs on top you know that is something that is unnecessary at all it is completely unnecessary to do that into a car because it doesn't serve any purpose however the designer designed it that way to mimic the cleavage of a woman's breast the beautiful alluring image of a woman's breast when when being viewed from here right that that beautiful curve that gently curves they mimic the roof on that and that is something that is so hard to manufacture and when we see the concept car we're all like nah they're not gonna do it but they did it right they went through all the effort pushed through the management and all that to to give the knots you know to give the go ahead and that to me is some form of emotional design and of course in contrast you have cars like these all these that are on the road you know the usual cars you can tell they just sit down there half an hour draw some lines and get it over and done with and that you can tell as well there's no effort being put into that design so in contrast those would be what I call what I would call um, emotional designs but there are also those that are overly designed right which is uh, you look at the Civic Type R right you have those, those little canards here and there fake vents fake grills fake stuffs everywhere it makes the car look overly sporty it's just everywhere and um, that was also done intentionally to appeal to a certain audience that likes these but in in if we're talking about within the disciplines of automotive design or product design those kind of designs won't be lasting you know they um, yeah those are what I would call overtly design you know they just over the top and uh, it's yeah and certain cars you have the interiors with a lot of lights everywhere uh, I would call that overly design as well however if it is used to, to their advantage to further build upon the brand identity then I give them a pass so I'll give you an example uh, the Mercedes A class the new one right from a product design discipline all right those lights in the cabin all those things are bordering gaudy you know but Mercedes is on track or they have a plan to turn their brand to be youthful okay and hence 
that those lightings in the A-Class might not be a good design choice when it comes to a product, but it is a good strategic choice when it comes to forming the entire brand, the entire car brand's brand identity. Yeah, that that is uh, what my opinion is. And then he asked another question. Uh, do you think um, brand identity or emotional design, which one is more important? Like I mentioned just now again, brand identity is something real, something that every brand should uh, make sure they, they, they put some effort in. Now, because when you want to sell your products to a, as large an audience as possible, you can't expect everyone to have the same level of income. Right? It's not everybody can afford an S-Class right? Hence, you want to use your S-Class to be your, your halo product You know, the one that attracts people to your brand The one that makes people respect your brand But you use your brand identity sparsely, deliberately To carry that down to your C-Classes, your, your A-Class even And that makes give, give people a very easy shortcut to immediately correlate with your Halo product and makes them feel good, right? So when you're buying an A-Class, you feel that you're buying a little part of that CLS. When you're buying a C-Class, you feel you're somewhere one step into the S-Class and that's what we call using products to form your brand identity and giving a gateway that is very low down the food chain for people to step into. That is a strategic advantage, something that car brands or any product should focus or have and then when it comes to emotional design emotional design uh, I mean in, in in the consumer world you cannot go all out until you violate all the uh, basic uh, rules like manufacturing margins and all that right you can't design a car with basically you can't have your designer having a free play doing whatever they like you know cost is gonna spiral and then at the end you don't you don't earn money it makes no point right um, or when you are strategically planning how to build your products within a certain uh, budget you do not want people to to catch you in trying to cheat a few dollars off here a few dollars off there case in point uh, the current generation of Jaguar products right the cars look beautiful uh, you can arguably say they look emotionally good as well the designs but when it comes to, to the interior you can immediately catch them cutting costs here and there you know they haven't reached uh, the critical volume to generate that kind of significant savings from cutting costs and what they did resulted in them not being able to reach that critical mass so they should they shot themselves in the foot so i would say brand identity is more important than emotional design uh, but emotional design uh, can be something that you put in in certain more important products but not in every single product that you build of course we would love them to put in all this effort but sometimes there are products where their purpose is to be daily A to B and things like that so you can design something that is crazy but at the end of the day if the parts are expensive and all that then it makes no sense however I need to applaud a lot of European manufacturers when it comes to this uh, Fiat, you know, Renault, uh, even Volkswagen you look at all the European models Volkswagen up, right? the Renault uh, that's not called a Clio, the one smaller than the Clio, I forgot that name. And then you have all the, the, the little Fiats and all that. And they all carry some form of emotional design. That means the designers wouldn't let that pass him. He wouldn't sign it off because he attaches his name to it and he wants to achieve something. So their designs are pretty good most of the time. And um, the worst offender would be the Japanese, right? Um, they 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 are really uh, how do I put this the Japanese right they have cars that are specially made for ASEAN markets only you know cars that they wouldn't even uh, want to mention in their history books they just build them to comply to regulations 
uh, or lack thereof and then just to sell and make money but that is that is the scenario that you have to understand that when you make cars you can't just be satisfying the designer himself right so another question are there in misinterpretations from consumers with regards to uh, uh, a product's brand identity within the context of, of, of design um, there are some certain to a certain extent uh, but I don't think this is an issue at all I mean uh, Kia can build an Optima that looks like a very very sporty or rear wheel drive 5 series and I don't think that is a misinterpretation as at all because consumers like it people like it they buy it if they buy your car because of the design whether you carry the performance to match your design or not it doesn't matter right so uh, yeah I don't think that's an issue okay the last question would be uh, Basically, it's a bit repetitive. It's about uh, whether the brand identity can be forged further by emotional design, or um, I I would say that design is only one part on how you form your brand identity because your brand identity there are a lot of other things that affects your brand identity right whether your product is reliable or not whether your product carries with it uh, great performance or not uh, all these played a role in in basically building up your brand identity so um, yeah design is only one part it's only one small aspect of uh, brand identity I would say so mm, it doesn't you can't use design to completely build your brand identity I mean there are exceptions Mini Cooper for instance all right they have such a strong uh, design ethos when it comes to their product lineup that nobody can copy it no one and uh, but if minis aren't so nice to drive if they are not well built that design wouldn't do much for them all right i guess most of the other questions are sort of repetitive i think i hope i have answered some of your questions and uh, good luck in whatever you're doing with these if you need more questions just uh, throw it to me cheers